here are important guidelines to keep in mind as you embrace the challenges of online classes. 1. Set up a good working space. It is important that the place is quiet, clear and free from distractions. 2. Make yourself look good online. Wear clothes the way you do when you go to school for in-person classes. 3. Have a respectful tone. When communicating with your teachers and classmates, observe a certain level of formality. Use respectful greetings and signatures like Good morning, Mr. Dow, Hi, Ms. Taylor, Please and Thank you. 4. Be kind and be professional. Make it a point to be respectful in your comments even if you disagree with others. Conduct yourself in an online class with the same respect, politeness, and professionalism that you would exhibit in a real-life classroom. 5. Properly use your webcam and microphone. It's good to show your face to give the impression that you're actively engaged with the lesson. Turn your microphone off when your teacher or others are speaking. This will eliminate background noise that can be distracting. 6. Properly use the chat box. Don't post irrelevant remarks. Instead, use the chat box to clarify misconceptions or share great ideas you have about the topic at hand. Don't yell by typing in all caps. In most situations, typing in all caps is perceived as inappropriate. 7. Always make an effort to use proper punctuation, spelling, and grammar. Observing these ensures clear expression of your thoughts or ideas. 8. Make sure to submit your assignments the proper way. Knowing how to properly submit your work online is key to your success as an online student. 9. Take time to read. When asked to comment on a post, take some time to read through each of the previous discussion post responses before writing your own response. And 10. Think before you type. What you share in an online classroom becomes part of a digital record. I hope that you observe these guidelines to help you in your online learning. May you have a wonderful school year. Good morning, learners. It feels so great to be with you today again. I am Sir Aaron Jan Cortez, your English teacher. In this session, I will take you to another fun field and exciting learning journey. Today, we will be focusing on determining tone, mood, technique, and purpose of the author. At the end of this session, you are all expected to first determine the tone mood technique and purpose of the author second classify literary text according to the purpose of the author and third write text which reveals the tone mood technique and purpose of the author so what are you waiting for get hold on your week six module your paper and your pen. Together, we will unravel all the activities 
which you will surely enjoy while at the same time learning. Let's go class! It's time to start our learning adventure. For our pre-assessment, I would like you to answer the following activities. Read and analyze the given text. Then, answer the questions by choosing the letter of the correct answer. Write your answers on your answer sheet. Dan Bam Pub is located at the busy street of Itaewon near the famous place Django. The owner offered a menu of typical Korean food. However, the food that they offer needed to be drowned with truckloads of spices. Too bad they used fresh ingredients, though it still tasted bland. They also need to improve the service because when the waiter was asked about their special, he didn't know what to answer. I know it is hard to start a business, but I wish they could improve it overall because the owner is nice. The first question, what is the tone of the text? A. Boastful B. Critical C. Factual B. Sad Number 2. What is the tone of this sentence? I know it is hard to start a business, but I wish they could improve it overall because the owner is nice. A. Irritated B. Sad C. Sympathetic D. Threatening Number 3. What is the writer's purpose? A. To inform the reader B. To caution and entertain the reader C. To flatter the reader and D. To sell something to the reader Number 4. Which statement uses exaggeration to make a point about food? A. The owner offered a menu of typical Korean food B. Too bad they use fresh ingredients, though it is still tasted bland. C. The food that they offer needed to be drowned with truckloads of spices. And D. Dan Bam Pub is located at the busy street of Itaewon, near the famous place Django. And lastly, for number 5, what technique is used in this statement? Dan Bam Pub is located at the busy street of Itaewon near the famous place Jenga. A. Descriptive B. Expository C. Narrative D. Persuasive Now, you will be given one minute to answer this question. The timer starts now. Time is up. Now it's time to check your answers. The following are the answers for your pre assessment test. For number one, we have letter B. Number two, letter C. Number three, letter D. Number four, letter C. And for number five, letter A. Good job, class. You made it. Now, 
let's proceed to what's in and refresh her ideas about literary devices. The instruction tells us to match the literary devices on column B with the descriptions on column A. Write the letter of the correct answers on your notebook. Again, you will be given one minute to answer these questions. The timer starts now. Okay, pens up. Let us now reveal the correct answers. So here are the answers. For number one, letter C. Number two, letter E. Number three, letter B. Number four, letter A. And number five, letter D. You're doing great, class. The details that are usually given in different stories, such as these literary devices, may lead you in identifying the tone, mood, technique, and the purpose of the author. To further enhance our ability to identify these elements, let's do the next task. Now, let us start our initial task for today's lesson. Look at the given pictures in the table and identify the feeling or emotion that is being portrayed. Then, analyze whether the feeling or emotion is positive or negative. Write your answer in your notebook. You will be given another one minute to answer this activity. And the timer starts now. Time is up. Let us now show the answer. The following are the answers for your initial task. Number one, sad, negative emotion. Number two, empathic, positive emotion. Number three, angry, negative emotion. Number four, upset, negative emotion. Number five, happy, positive emotion. High five for a job well done. COVID-19 is a disease caused by the new coronavirus. Know the symptoms. They include fever, coughing, muscle pain, shortness of breath. What can you do? Wash your hands frequently with soap and water for 20 seconds or use an alcohol-based hand rub. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. When coughing or sneezing, cover your mouth with a tissue or flexed elbow. Discard tissues into a closed bin and then wash your hands. Maintain a distance of at least one meter between yourself and someone who is ill. Seek medical help if you display symptoms. Wear a mask if you are coughing or sneezing, or if you are caring for someone who is sick. Dispose of your masks into a closed bin and then wash your hands. Check trusted sources regularly for accurate information. Remember, the best prevention is to keep yourself healthy and follow these safe steps. Now,
let's start discussing how to determine the tone, mood, technique, and purpose of the art. To begin with, let us define and analyze the following terms. First, we have tone. Second, we have mood. Third, we have technique. And fourth, we have purpose of the author. Tone is the attitude of the author towards a given topic. The tone is expressed through the words of the author. As a reader, you may look at the choice of words and utilization of words of the author to identify the tone. The tone of the author can either be objective or subjective. An objective tone is unbiased and neutral. The author uses concise, clear, and courteous words which are based on facts which makes the text formal. While the subjective tone uses words that convey emotion, feelings, and thoughts which may be referred as creative and informal as well. Always just remember, according to Ellen of 2010, as a reader, you must read between the lines to feel the attitude of the author and identify the tone. For example, this house is shabby, but since we grew up here, it has a special place in my heart. In this sentence, we can say that the tone is sentimental because of the phrase, it has a special place in my heart, which expresses warm-hearted emotions. Number two, mood. Mood refers to the emotion that arises in a reader or the atmosphere of the text. The mood is developed through the setting, tone, and diction. Mood is different from tone in a way that mood is the emotion that the author wanted the readers to feel while reading the text. Some positive moods are cheerful, calm, dreamy, excited, and happy, while being angry, depressed, gloomy, envious, and even frustrated are negative moods. For example, a certain author writes a horror story utilizing serious and sinister tone. The tone helps to create a scary atmosphere and a nervous and frightened mood for the readers. Number three, technique. Technique is the author's syntax, word choice, and tone. Techniques may vary from one author to another. There are four basic literary styles used in writing. These are the expository or argumentative, descriptive, persuasive, and narrative. And now, let us dig deeper with these examples. For number one, we have expository or argumentative, which tells the reader about a specific subject or topic, but the author leaves out his own opinions about the topic. Number two, descriptive. It describes an event, a character, or a place in detail. The author usually incorporates sensory details in the text. For number three, we have persuasive. It gives reason and justifications to make the readers believe his point of view. The aim of this text is to persuade or convince the reader. And lastly, for number four, we have narrative, which narrates a story like in novels, short stories, biographies, and poetries. And for the last element, we have purpose. Purpose is the reason why the author writes the text. The main purposes of writing a text are to inform, to entertain, and to persuade. For number one, to inform. In here, the author gives out information through the text by providing facts and explanation to the readers. While for number two, to entertain, the author gives delight or amusement to the readers through writing the text. Number three, to persuade. The author convinces the readers to agree to his or her opinion or point of view. Also, the author may give facts to prove a point. For example, people who are not wearing face masks should be arrested by the authorities. In this sentence, we can say that the purpose of the author is to convince the reader to always wear their face mask whenever they go out in public places. And that's how we identify the tone, mood, technique, and purpose of the author. 
I hope you were able to jot down all these important details because we will be needing this for our next task. And now, let us enjoy while we explore the following activities. We have Independent Activity 1, Independent Activity 2, and Independent Activity 3. For our Independent Activity 1, you're going to identify the tone of the following statements. Choices are provided below. Write your answers in your notebook. In this activity, number one is done for you to serve as an example. For independent activity number two, you're just going to classify the following examples of text according to their purpose. You're going to write your answer in your notebook. And lastly, for the independent activity number three, you're just going to read the poem entitled The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner by Samuel Taylor. Identify the mood, tone, and purpose of the poem. Justify your answer by explaining how you arrived to that answer. Write your answer in your notebook. In this activity, the technique is already provided for you to serve as an example. Get your paper and pen to start answering the questions. The timer starts now. Time's up! You are all excellent! All the answers for these activities will be checked virtually via Messenger. Just take a photo of your answer and send it to me privately. And now, let us proceed to what I have learned to ponder the things that we have learned and discovered from this lesson. For the instructions, reflect on what you have learned after taking up this lesson by completing the chart below in 2-3 to three sentences. For the first question, what were your thoughts or ideas about the tone, mood, technique, and purpose of the author before the discussion of the lesson? Number two, what new or additional ideas did you learn after taking up this lesson? And for number three, how are you going to apply the things you have learned about the tone, mood, technique, and purpose of the author? You will be given another one minute to answer this activity. And the timer starts now. You are absolutely awesome! Your answers will be evaluated right after this video. And now, let us put your learning into action by doing what I can do. The instruction tells us to write true if the statement is correct based on what you have learned from the lesson, and false if it does not. Write your answer in all caps using your pen and notebook. For number one, the tone and mood of the text are the same. 
Number two, the purpose of the author is the reason of writing a certain text. Number three, mood is the author's attitude towards the topic. Number four, expository, narrative, descriptive, and persuasive are techniques that writers may utilize in writing a text. And for number five, commercials and advertisements are under persuasive text. You will be given another one minute to answer this activity. Timer starts now. Now, let's see, how do you fare to this test? So here are the answers. Number one, false. Number two, true. Number three, false. Number four, true. And for number five, true. You have done it well. Good job. You really deserve an applause. Now, let us evaluate your overall learning using your final assessment. Read the following statements carefully before answering. Write your answers in your notebook. Let us now answer this 10 multiple choice item test. For number one, what do you call to the attitude of an author to a given topic? A. Mood B. Purpose C. Technique D. Tone for number two, which of the following refers to the syntax, word choice, and tone of the author? A. Mood B. Purpose C. Technique D. Tone For number three, which of the following is not a technique of an author in writing a text? A. Descriptive B. Expository C. Persuasive D. Summative For number four, what is the atmosphere of the text or the emotion that arises from the readers? A. Mood B. Purpose C. Technique D. Tone For number 5, which of the following is the reason why the author has written a text? A. Mood B. Purpose C. Technique D. Tone Number 6 what is the tone in this statement? Please list all the things that should be bought in the supermarket. A. Irritated B. Sad C. Straightforward D. Threatening Number 7. What is the tone in this statement? Back off. I don't need you here. A. Irritated B. Sarcastic C. Sympathetic D. Threatening Number 8. What is the tone in this statement? If you need help, please don't hesitate to call me. A. Sad B. Straightforward C. Sympathetic D. Threatening Number 9. What is the purpose of this statement? Racism should be eliminated. A. To analyze B. To frighten C. To inspire D. To persuade For number 10 What is the purpose of this statement? Matter is anything that occupies space and has mass A. To abuse B. To explain C. To inform and D. To persuade Timer starts now
Great! I'm glad you enjoy learning. Now, let us reveal the answers. Now, here are the answers for your final assessment. Number one, we have letter B. Number two, letter C. Number three, letter D. Number four, letter A. Number five, letter B. Number six, letter C. Number seven, letter A. Number eight, letter C. Number nine, letter D. And number 10, letter C. You're definitely fantastic. And now, for your assignment, write five to 10 sentence persuasive essay about the importance of public health protocols in the time of COVID-19. Write your answer on your intermediate pad. So here's the scoring guide for your assignment. For number one, we have ideas for authenticity or originality of the thought that you're going to include to your essay, five points. Number two, organization, which includes the number of sentences and how you weave or connect it to one another, five points. And for the last one, we have the sentence structure. For grammar awareness, five points. So all in all, you will be receiving 15 points if you will be able to obtain this criteria. What a productive day! I hope you find enjoyment while learning this lesson. Thank you for listening. Until next time, bye!